right. So the flight today is going to be a continuation of my uh, around the world flight. Got a bunch of uh, packages for people in various locations, so I'll be hitting a few airports. I reset my altimeter. Let's see here, we'll just go ahead and tune to the uh, local traffic. I don't know which way the wind is blowing. Let's see, do I have a, I think I have a display right here. Oh, look, zero. <laughs> So it doesn't matter which runway I take off at. <coughs> All right, so let's just say 22 because that one's the closest one. But um, the main reason why I was doing these around the world flights and why I'm going to the airports that I am is because all of these airports that I go to are have been either modified or were completely added in by other people and I wanted to see other people's work and being that I was uh, pretty he hot and heavy into uh, scenery design and development for flight sim um, for entertainment purposes obviously I'm not uh, no big name otherwise you might have heard of me <coughs> but uh, it takes a lot to do this and I wanted to see what other people did and so far a lot of these uh, South American airports, um, Mexican airports, um, Central American airports are pretty, I want to say bland, but they're you know, not, not as much attention to detail as some of the major ones like in the United States or in the Europe or England that people have put time and effort into. And the oddest part is a lot of scenery developers don't even live in the country that they're creating airports for and they make fantastic airports. Did I say runway 4? I could have swore I selected runway uh, 2 2. Whatever, it's a game. There's no other air traffic in the area anyway. That's what happens. I get busy talking to you guys, and I don't pay attention to what I'm actually doing. Honest, the ground textures look better when you get up in the air. So much, uh, much. So as you can see, compared to FSX, the terrain and the vegetation and that are not as pretty. Oh, now that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> that's that's one of those things that I really dislike about FS. All of a sudden, boom! The weather immediately changes when it should gradually change to whatever it is. The airport that I'm headed to is at a high altitude. I think it's at like 8,000 feet, if I remember right. So, as you can see, the path that I have runs along the edge of the mountains, and then I'll actually go into the mountain area. To the mountainous area. There we go. Now we got some pre-
pretty clouds. You know, the ground textures don't look so bad because it is a flight simulator. So it's supposed to look better when you're up in the air. Now, I can't remember how to set the altitude for the autopilot. Vertical speed. I'll put the uh, yaw damper. Getting real tired of this alert button over here. So let's go take a quick look at FS Nav. <coughs> ah, yes, I'm supposed to go to an altitude of 12,500. So let me go ahead and shrink that down there. Life of an air mailman. Yes, it's very uh, boring. Look at all that stuff. Oh, we got vegetables. So make sure we get all priority mail. lake up here, the top of these mountains. That would definitely be pretty awesome to hike up to. I'll have to look up where that lake is at, what the name of that lake is. Looking at the lake and marveling at the uh, clouds and how high up the lake is and not paying attention to my path here. So, looks like the runway is running uh, basically left to right. Right to left. And we got a little bit of a flat area up here. And I think I see the runway. Yep, I believe I see the runway. Oh yeah, see how the scenery is starting to pop in. It's 
still a little high, but that's okay. I'm going to go out a little bit farther. are barely drooping. Ah, now the serious flaps are down. I think I'm out far enough. I'll do a descending bank. Coordinated, there we go. Don't want to slip or slide. Not purposely. I think I got a. I think I got it under control here. Oh sure, throw in some clouds. Let's make it even worse. I come in too low. <laughs> Actually, what I'm doing is I'm purposely flying low so all the vi villagers know that their mail is coming in. That's what it is. Now we'll act like we know what we're doing. So upon uh, creating the video, I realized that I'd forgotten to turn my microphone on at this point. So I'm going to try and uh, ad lib a little bit and make it so it's not as boring as it can be. Um, I already went through all the pre-flight stuff and I got the uh, clearance to taxi. So I'm just going to the hold short point and then calling clearance to take the active. So I had thought about taking off from that point. Uh, it looked like I had enough runway, but then I figured, you know, 
being at the, the altitude the airfield's at, I'd be safe to just go to the end of the runway and uh, use the full length. So uh, here we go. I don't need to climb too high because the other airfield is just over that way. But I'm going to have to zigzag through the valleys just to uh, get to it. Looks like it's right at the edge of that lake over there, so that's a good uh, that's a good landmark for me. I think I see the runway. hot here because I started a little high. Fortunately there are no speed brakes on this aircraft so I'm just going to ride it down. Only uh, 102 knots, that's really not fast. Whoa, getting a little bit of a <laughs> sudden crosswind there. Call out my uh, approach. Shame on me. I think the 
there's a taxiway getting over there. Oh, there, I think I see it. Part of the welcoming committee. 